the Florida Podcast Network, the voice of Florida. Welcome to episode three of the Florida Podcasting News Show on the Florida Podcast Network. Florida Podcasting News keeps you on the inside of Florida's podcasting industry. On today's episode, we'll be reviewing PodFest with founder Chris Kermitzos. In general podcasting news, there is scamming, numbers, I might have a little rant, and a new kind of search. Plus, our podcasting tip of the week is on repurposing and monetizing content for your podcast. And as always, we will catch you up on the latest news with the Florida Podcast Network. This episode is brought to you by Flintstone Media. Thanks for joining us. This is Jemmy. And this is Glenn. Welcome back to a brand new episode of the Florida Podcasting News Show. We are both recovering from running all over the place, especially with PodFest. But we are stopping to, of course, record this special episode. And this show is going to be released on the 1st and 15th of every month, just to remind you. And the episode that's released on the 15th, which is this one, is going to be accompanied by a newsletter. So you can find all of that great information, including the back catalog of the newsletter at floridapodcastingnews.com. And one of the things that we're really trying to focus on with this show for new listeners is the Florida podcasting scene. And, you know, a lot of general podcasting news applies to us as well, but we're really trying to focus on that and take the years actually between us where we're trying to take the 14 years of experience we've had in podcasting and the over 8,000 episodes and just bring a little bit of our view of what's happening. So that's why we're here. And with that, we're going to get into the Florida industry news and events with a very special guest, Chris Kermitzos, who is not only the founder of PodFest, but he's also the founder of the Florida Podcasters Association and our very good buddy. Hey there, Chris. You are the founder of both PodFest and the Florida Podcasters Association and a good buddy of both Glenn and I. And we're so excited to have you. We're all kind of recovering still from PodFest. How's your recovery going there, Chris? Uh, yeah, I'm at 80%, so I'm almost there. Uh, I've been <laughs> sleeping a lot, uh, resting up, but man, what a what an amazing event. We just wrapped. Oh, it was bigger and better than ever it felt like this year. Am I right? Yeah, you know what it was? Our community has always been alive and well, but this was the first time we had the resources via sponsors to do like really big after parties to provide for appetizers on pretty much all levels uh, at night. So it just took everything up a notch uh, to have that along with our community. When you collide the two, it created a perfect mix for one of the greatest events I've ever been uh, a part of. You know, I I started in this event at the beginning, really, and when the room was, what, 80 of us in Tampa, uh, when PodFest was about 80 people, and one of the things I was impressed with, and and this this is all because of you, by the way, uh, one of the things I was impressed with was how, even with a thousand people now in the place, it still felt like a huge family and a much more inviting conference than any other conference you're going to go to. Well, you and I have talked about this in the past. Um, I've had, I've done a lot of events and the largest events I've been able to get to on a local level was 500 people. And what I was really good at doing is you could actually scale the community feel up and have it feel even better and it could get even stronger and there's even more value for everybody, but it takes a lot of skill to do that. And luckily, um, like when we were at a hundred people, only 80 would show. So your number is accurate back then because we would be all locals. And then we would invite people the next year, we'd double, and then we moved it to Orlando, kept doubling. But the key is we keep retaining our core, what I call our pillars, which Jemmy, uh, Glenn, you guys are part of that. Neil Gilarte is part of that. Diane Daniels is part of that. Christy Hausler. And I can name about 50 people off the top of my head who are pillars of the community that then scale out our, our culture across all spectrums as we grow to, you know, we were at 1,000 attendees, just, just under that, but around 1,000. And that's what really helps uh, the special sauce keep growing. So when you or I are not in the room, one of our peers are in the room and they're progressing the community family feel when we're not around. And that's really important for this to keep uh, feeling that way. 
Yeah, you know, that's, it's something that's so impressive. You know, I thought back and it's really, it's, I call PodFest like my annual Mecca. And it's really neat to see people I'm so close with, like Glenn. You know, I saw Gabe Aloisi get the, the community award. Gabe, was, yep. Yeah, and that was named for Glenn. And what's interesting about that is it, it, it speaks to exactly what you're talking about. It starts at the top and it just kind of flows out. And I'm reinvigorating the Palm Beach Podcasters Association. We have a friend, Ed, who's thinking about doing something for Southwest Florida, and we have you, you know, really kick, kicking things off in the Tampa area. Christy's doing stuff with Key West. In Key West, like, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it's like there are these groups that are forming that we're all part of the same family, but now we have almost like subdivisions as, as we grow, but we're still all joined together. It's really phenomenal. The, the community that you've built in PodFest is all, it's, it's, it starts with you, and, the, and, and you've managed to do that not just with PodFest, but also with the Florida Podcast Association. And so I really want to give you an opportunity to talk about, about that and get people to think about podcasting as a community because when you're independent, it really takes a network. Well, not only that, but I don't know if you guys noticed, but John Largent, um, John Largent came to set the second podcast in Tampa. He has started the Texas Podcasting Association. So wow. what we started in Florida is actually going into and other he's, states. He's the husband of Jenny Largent, right? Who's the artist who painted The amazing our artist. <laughs> oh, my God. So what she did. I got goosebumps. I have it hanging in my house now. Um, in case anyone's listening, this Jenny Lar- uh, Largent, an amazing artist, took our sound bars from a phrase and then literally painted it and painted it with the soul of the individual's voice, which I thought was amazing. Truly amazing. Truly amazing. So, yeah. So tell us about Florida Podcast Association. I know I haven't made it out up there yet. It's just it's always <laughs> I know, it's, I'm never able to make it. And it's it's killing me. But I know that Glenn has been a big part of it. So you've had a lot of time um, making it to that meeting. So tell us a little bit about that association. And let's get some more ears and eyes on it. Yeah, for the last five years, we've been consistent. We meet the second Tuesday of every month. Um, there's, uh, you know, Glenn, the geek tip, be consistent, right? So when it comes to events, I'm as consistent as they come. Uh, second Tuesday of every month, 6.30 p.m. to 9 p.m., we hang out at the IHOP on uh, 4910 West Spruce, which is across from the International Airport in Tampa. Uh, we might be moving into a bigger room. Last month, we had 65 people, and I literally had standing room only. Uh, this month, we had 41 people. I think some took a break because PodFest was literally the weekend before. But uh, we're open to everybody that wants to learn. It's only $10 to attend. And then we were doing quarterly meetings last year in Orlando on Full Sail campus. The challenge is Full Sail would give us different um, places amongst their campus, and it was tough to find a consistent room. So we will be doing a consistent meetup in Orlando starting sometime this year. Uh, We just are going to have a board of content creators, so that way, in case I can't make it, the meeting will run on time, will run with our philosophy. And I always believe in charging $10, to be quite frank with you, because we want people invested in the process, and that's a minimal amount. So that way, it's a win-win. Yeah, because um, w- one of the big lessons that I've learned, just in general life and business, is that you know you want to give, 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 but if it's not a sustainable model, you're going to cut yourself off at the knees, and then you're not going to be able to give it all. So it sounds like the ten dollar charge is it's a minimal investment into the kind of benefit that you can get, you know, both from knowledge and and networking from from joining the group so i encourage everyone yeah it's it's not only that but like i have someone helping me with registration so it covers costs so that way exactly i don't really have to worry about um what i do what i would recommend anyone that's running a meetup even if you don't charge make it a recommended contribution and what happens is people will contribute and they want to help support and those tend to be your most loyal and most hardcore of attendees because they show up each and every month and it creates a, a much um, stronger connection and network amongst the members. You know, isn't it funny? Patreon, Patreon, Patreon. What we all, you know, what we promote uh, for, on the Horse Radio Network, we have 400 people now who are donating to that uh, because they're vested. Wow. It's exactly yeah. what you said. They're vested. It's no different. They're, they want to contribute. They want to help. And you're going to get the serious ones then in your core group. And, and that I was glad from the day one when I went there and you were charging for it because it does mean something more. So, Chris, thank you so much. Where can people become Florida Podcast Association? Where can they find it and yeah, uh, just, chat uh, with uh, the Facebook, community? Look, look up the group on Facebook, the Florida Podcast Association on Facebook. Uh, join that. We do have a meetup on meetup, uh, but we post everything through the Facebook group. 
We're in the process of uh, redoing our website to reflect all the other meetups in the state of Florida, as well as linking to you guys. So that way we could all like support each other because everybody shows up on different pages. We just want to make sure everybody knows that there's a whole network in the state of Florida. And, you know, with 20 million uh, residents, we should be the leaders in, in, in this area because we are the most, one of the most vibrant communities in the country. And, you know, a lot of us moved to Florida because we want to live a, an amazing life. <laughs> so I think it's cool that we're all, we're all there. And I have two girls. I want them to have um, a, a media landscape that they're proud of. So if they ever want to get in, involved in media, they could say, hey, my daddy, along with Jamie and Glenn the Geek and a bunch of these other crazies, started this thing years ago. <laughs> and they started these little meetups, but now it's an entire industry, you know. And that's how it all works, as you guys know. It all starts with grassroots. And then years later, there's an entire industry. It's like, why is Florida so big? It's because a bunch of a bunch of people that didn't know any better started stuff early <laughs> on and just got word. their friends together. <laughs> that's, yeah, you just we're just like, oh, we're doing meetups. But the, the biggest leaders in the future will come out of our groups. And that's, it's already happening. We know that. Where do you but, see the future um, of Florida podcasting, Chris? It, honestly, I, I see, it's almost like popcorn kernels. Every one of these meetups will have leaders in different areas popping up. And we will be one of the most robust ecosystems for media in the next 10 years because of these meetup systems, because we're opening up ideas, opening up minds. And because Florida is not like California, New York, where people usually wait to get paid before they start, more entrepreneurial, mm -hmm. you're going to see some really big media companies over time show up from the Florida ecosystem, and it's going to put us on the map as one of the leaders in the... Uh, we're, I think we're already in the conversation, but over the next five to 10 years, we will be the leaders in audio, on-demand audio in, in the country. I, I have no doubt about it. Fantastic. And you know, <laughs> you take a look at who was at that meeting, and, and it represents that. Look at Lou Mangiello. I mean, I, yep. I'm there. I'm Number there with one podcaster, kid and friendly in the world. Yeah, and I'm there with you know the Horse Radio Network, and yep. you know we got we got uh, all of Jemmy stuff. I mean, it just there are Jonathan some Oaks, Jonathan Oaks. Jonathan Oaks. Podcast he's, I keep forgetting he's in Florida because he's in he's in the way north. He's in the way yep. north up there, you know. So. <laughs> <Still> <laughs> Well, thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me on. All right. Take care. Right, bye, guys. Well, it was so good to meet a lot of you uh, for the first time. And so many of you are our friends anyway. And we got to hang out with you at PodFest. And we really enjoyed year that after year. After year. year. <laughs> Can I just say that Jemmy did a fantastic job joining me on stage for the opening keynote. You, you, you kicked butt. Everybody, everybody loved you. You thank were you. great. Thank you. And we, and the comment I kept getting is that we work so well together. And I'm like, yeah, well, we had a little practice. <laughs> we traveled a little bit with our other show and we work together like every day. So, yeah, we got kind of get to know each other. And, and I knew you, we kind of put an outline together for that. But I, as always, I didn't really follow it all that well. <laughs> And, <laughs> I have to and, keep you on track as <laughs> usual. And you jumped right in. You you were right there. I mean, thank you for adapting. I, I warned you ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I knew ahead of time. Trust me, I've worked with you before <laughs> once or twice. <laughs> but it was neat to do the keynote and really talk about PodFest being a family. And one of the things we wanted to impress upon people, because they positioned our keynote right at the beginning of the strategic alliance which is the event that brings like, forces everyone to meet each other right but still at a conference you might look at other people and be like i don't know if i want to meet you the whole purpose of putting glenn and i on that stage was to show people that you never know who you're going to meet and what to expect from that connection because certainly from the surface you and i are so different but you know it it works and the whole face of this crowd seems to have been evolving this time don't you think yeah, I think there were at least 50% women at this conference, and there were more African Americans than I have ever seen. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was nice to see, uh, you know, because I think the last PodFest, you and maybe two or three other people. Uh, were, I'm were the, so used to being one of the few pieces of pepper and all. Yeah, yeah. Ocean full went, of salt. She, Jimmy went to a high school where she was the only black person. So I mean, that it's tells true. you something. It's true. But no, they were very, you and you and Ken were the only ones before, but now it's just branched out. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to he, Thaddeus. He's brand new on the scene, checking things out. Super tall guy. He was rocking a dashiki at Howl at the Moon. I was like, you go, Thaddeus. <laughs> You look really short, and I'm six one. <clears throat> but there was so much diversity in this group uh, across the board, from age to 
We had, uh, you know, everywhere from Izzy being 10 all the way up to people you, in their 70s. All the way up to you. I wasn't the oldest, that- I gotta say. <laughs> But that was cool too, because it just goes to show you can't, I mean, there were, there were people in their seventies there, if not one in their eighties, you know, it was so fantastic. It, it was great to see that. And it's good to see that coming into podcasting in general. Yeah. You know, pod, pod fest is because it's independent podcast is almost like a little subset of podcasting or, or our culture in general. And I think it's, it really shows that, yeah, we're just becoming more diverse. Opportunities are opening up for everybody. It's really neat. Well, now time for some general podcasting news that I found interesting. And I got most of these from the Podcast Business Journal. If you're not subscribed to that, it's a fantastic newsletter that comes out. And it's out of Florida, by the way. out of Florida. And the editor of the Podcast Business Journal is our buddy, Ed Ryan, who's the host of Beach Talk Radio. So it all comes full circle. Look at this. (laughs) Very professional, very well done. So you go subscribe to it, Podcast Business Journal. One of the things that was in there was a big topic of conversation at PodFest over the weekend was the new Edison and Triton digital numbers that came out. And let me tell you what, over 50% have now listened to a podcast. And that is so exciting because that was not that way when we started. (laughs) the majority. (laughs) Yes. Uh, There are more people who are aware of us than not. And I think that's a very good thing. (laughs) <laughs> and the biggest jump I saw there is podcasting has been growing between 3 and 4% ever since I started, way back in 2006. And this year saw the biggest gain. It grew 8% in one year in 2018. Wow. So Jenny, that's the big news. Jenny Skog and I, she, um, I'm, the name of her company is unfortunately escaping me at this moment, but she was on the panel with me at the Hispanic Radio Conference just the other day. And we were talking about this, and she was talking about how impressed she was that the biggest group to see the biggest jump is the 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 20 I think it's the the 12 to 24 year old group. So what that tells me is that there's a big groundswell like the awareness of the generations below us is already growing. It's and, fantastic. And they haven't decided that podcasts are just for old people yet. Right. So <laughs> And then the next thing too is this is just a warning. Uh there is some scamming going on in the podcasting world. If you get email and I've gotten a bunch of these oh, lately, probably because I have so many shows. But if you get an email that says, Hey, we can help you with your podcast, we're podcasting experts, we can get it out there for you. And we it's can in broken English. <laughs> yeah, in broken English. And the, the email just seems like they're there to help you and we'll help you get better more ratings on your show. There is nothing free in this world, people, and nothing that's easy in podcasting. And what's happening now is if you engage these people at all, then they send you a bill for work they never did. Mm -hmm. Like this one lady got a bill for $800 and they had no proof they'd ever done any work. But when she refused to pay it, they came back and said that they were going to flood her uh, with negative reviews, one star reviews across all the platforms. And they use an algorithm them to do that so they use they just spam and they're threatening you with basically to get your show pulled this is like the like, new ethiopian prince email it's prim- right it's, it's, <laughs> you would get the email it says it's extortion I'm an is what prince. it is i want it's to send extortion. you a million dollars if you send me ten thousand first yep. and then you send the ten thousand or you don't or whatever and then things just spiral out of control in a very bad way and that's what seems like it sounds like is happening here and it makes me wonder because now we have all these platforms that we podcasters are relying on for our stats, for our reviews, for our comments, for all of this stuff. And so if it comes to one troll kind of entity who's making threats and saying, I can now have the power to blast your show with all this negativity and ruin your show, your show's ratings. I mean, I hope that some of these platforms start to take notice and see if they there's are. A way. They are taking notice. And th- this actually came from one of those platforms. So, uh, you know, I just be aware. D- it, it, do not engage is yeah. what I'm saying. Delete that email. If it's too good to be true, it is. I get so. the same thing on the website building side too. Oh, I can build up your yeah, yeah. SEOs and SEO blah, blah, blah. ones like, especially. Oh, no, yeah, I get I 10 of those this. a day. <laughs> yeah, forget it. All right. And then the, the final thing I wanted to talk about was, is this was actually a paid advertisement on, so I'm sorry, uh, Ed, but this was a paid advertisement on the newsletter. Uh, but there was one thing, it was the three tricks to market your podcast for free. And I just want to highlight one of the things. And one of the things was get big guests. 
get guests with big social media followings. And this has been a misnomer in the podcasting world for years. Oh, yes. Oh, this is the subject of your rant I'm starting yes, to sense. <laughs> this is where the rant comes in. <laughs> Big guests are great, and we get them too. We just interviewed one of the biggest screenwriters in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. And, but one, and by the way, I got a very giddy phone call from Glenn afterwards. <laughs> yes, it was for the probably record. one of the. We've interviewed 9,000 people. That was probably one of the top 10 interviews. But I didn't get him on because I wanted him to promote us. I got him on because it was good content for our show, Mm -hmm. and it was valuable for our listeners. Mm -hmm. This article basically says, get a big guest because they'll go out and they'll promote you everywhere, and they have a billion (laughs) followers on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and all of that. And, you know, sometimes that's true. But this is the problem with big guests, and I'm going to use it my own personal example. I've been on a lot of podcasts, not as many as Dave Jackson's and the John Lee Dumas of the world, but I do get invited to go on a lot of podcasts and I have a half decent follower base. But if I post on there that I've done another podcast, my fans have already heard me do a thousand Mm -hmm, podcasts. mm -hmm. They don't care. You know, they're at the point where me doing another interview with somebody and I posting it is not going to cause them to go listen because the big yeah, they've heard me before. They And the bigger, you know, you get a John Lee Dumas, and he even posts it on there. Again, it's, it's om- I almost am afraid to post all the time to my followers because I do so many. Honestly, it's kind of the same thing we found when we do Finding Florida, that the, the attractions and the, the towns that are the smallest are the ones that we get the biggest hits from because they just promote the heck out of our episodes because they're so jazzed about it. Whereas the people who, quite frankly, don't need our exposure, they don't do anything to get they it. Don't care, so they right. don't care, right. They don't care. And that's, and that's true on my side, too, with the Horse Radio Network. We did... Uh, our biggest show was Stable Scoop, and it was our flagship show. The one year, and it's a weekly show, we decided to highlight and only have guests on that were listeners. So for 50 episodes, we had 50 listeners on, mm. one a week. Our numbers completely went... Completely unknown people. <laughs> yes, they were our listeners. Our numbers went up 50% that yeah, year. I believe you. And that's because the smaller the guest, they'll tell everybody. It was probably fantastic. It was. It's great. We met some very interesting people. Yeah. And, the, and they told everybody they knew. <laughs> and those people went and listened because they had never heard their friend on the show before. Exactly. You know, and one of the points I want to make, I want to shout out to Danny Pena because he, he was on the panel with me and he made a very important point to the people, the, the audience we were speaking to at the Hispanic radio conference they were all radio radio heads looking to see if there's a podcasting opportunity for them and one of the before we even walked in the room he's like i have one point to make and here it is and he did basically right at the gate that they can't rely on just their brand to get their followers and it's the same thing with when you're booking guests you can't just rely on the brand of a guest to say oh I'm, this is going to be a bang out show no the content has to be good and so what he was trying to tell the radio people is when you're creating a show it can't just be the person who's who's behind the show is enough to make the show a success the content Content has to be consistently good. And so if you're putting, if you're getting this really great guest on, you know, wonderful, but make sure the content is really good. Like the guest you just had on the screenwriter, you didn't really talk about the in, in, ins and outs of why the character development was such and such. No, in this he movie. Is the, you talked about He puts horses. horses in all his movies. <laughs> He's the horse guy. Yeah. <laughs> and he loved it. By the way, he gave us 10 minutes. This is, again, one of the top screenwriters in the country. And his people gave us 10 minutes. And we talked for 40 because he was talking about horses. And he basically told him to go away. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, big media followings are great, um, but they just don't pan out the way that you might expect them to. So please don't let that be your driving Your factor. only driving no. force, right? That's all I wanted to say is the smaller guests have actually probably gotten us more permanent listeners. Hey, look at that. I actually joined you on your soapbox. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> we soapbox well together. <laughs> all right. Let's head off to Network News next. <laughs> Flintstone Media has been the digital bedrock of several Florida brands and businesses, serving as a highly resourceful website and podcast production house since 2010. Ready to be seen? Flintstone Media has crafted the online presence for dozens of brands. In creating an intelligently built website that acts as your business's beacon, Flintstone Media will craft solid and attractive content to control your brand's message, collect visitor data, and showcase what you have to offer. Ready to be heard? Work with a leader in Florida's podcasting industry 
and add a podcast to your brand's content offerings. From setup to recording and distribution, Jemmy will lend her experience producing over 500 episodes and make the process of creating your show simple and easy for you. Visit FlintstoneMedia.com for website and podcast samples and to ignite your digital presence. That's FlintstoneMedia.com. for us to catch you up on everything that's happening with the Florida Podcast Network. And as we mentioned at the top of the show, Glenn and I got to do the opening keynote at PodFest. It was so much fun. But that wasn't the only thing we got to do at PodFest. We got to do like panels and things. And so I did the geolocal panel, which Glenn actually got to moderate for me. So it was like having the teacher up there while I'm a student. <laughs> I'm in the classroom waiting to have my, my have my hand raised and everything. But so he was doing. You did a great job as a mod. I've never seen you in that position before, Glenn. It was fun. It's fun to do. It's hard. It's hard. Like when I was moderating the network panel, it's hard because I want to answer all the questions. Yes. <laughs> you know, Are you kidding me? Back. So actually, what's funny about that? So yeah. So on. So we did our keynote on Thursday. You moderated a network panel and on Friday and I was kind of free. So I'm like, well, of course sit in on that. And then you asked me to control the clicker. And then what's funny is the microphones didn't work well together. So then I was holding one of the mics and then it turned into, well, Jimmy, why don't you run the room for the Q and a, so that I, (laughs) so that people are asking you guys questions. So not only is the moderator having to hold back from answering them, but the girl holding the microphone, (laughs) I had to hold back from answering the questions. And by the way, I didn't succeed very well. I did. <laughs> but it was fun and then yeah and then the geolocal panel was on saturday which i was on officially and then you moderated that one and that was that was really great and that was um neat to see just how many people are doing and interested in doing geolocal based stuff yeah, we probably i think uh chris said we had 50 people in the room it was great. so it was really great and we had salt so we had a gentleman from salt lake we had a, uh, a woman from philly and then of course our friend she Kyle was terrific Sass, she was great yeah. They were all too good. Awesome, all good. the people on the panels were great this time. Absolutely. Yeah. And Kyle Sasser right out of Tampa Bay. So yeah. he's, he's a Florida guy. Hi, Kyle. Hi, Kyle. He's killing it with his show. But yeah, so it was just, it was a lot of fun to run around and do PodFest stuff. And then we also, I got to relaunch <laughs> softly, very softly relaunch Palm Beach Podcasters in uh, some random hallway. <laughs> I basically wrote down people's names and said, we'll having another meeting in the future. We'll, we'll be in touch. So Desmond and I will be um, kicking that. Palm Beach Podcast. I'm excited about that. I'm super excited. I might about come that. down and, and uh, join you one day. Well, it's just like Chris was saying, you know, it's about these pockets of these groups that are just really helping keep the industry alive. I really should start Florida. something up here uh, really in Gainesville because really there's should. nothing up here. Uh, you know, I really should. I'm sure there's some podcasters up here. And I'm sure you have tons of time on your plate. Yeah, I'll just do that in my free time. (laughs) In your free time. (laughs) (laughs) Jennifer, kill me. I know. And then, so then after I get back from PodFest, um, I had. Tuesday night, I had the Hispanic. She had radio. no voice, no and voice. then <laughs> oh my god, I really did. Well, I especially lost my voice because my my son turned seven on Sunday, so that I had seven year olds running around the house. Oh, I really lost my voice, and then I had to be on a panel in Miami for the Hispanic Radio Conference with uh, the aforementioned Danny Pena. He was great, and then of course it was moderated by Ed and Kim Ryan, who I want to take a moment to introduce everybody to their show in case you haven't noticed yet (laughs) they have a new show on the network called beach talk radio out of fort myers and they're fantastic it airs live on saturday mornings and you can catch them on the network and on the website thereafter later that day Okay, so you might notice a little bit of an issue still with my voice. We mentioned I totally lost it. And then when you do like voice strain, you get a little pain sometimes. I'm sure I feel like I had a bruised vocal cord. I don't know, but it hurt. So I was whining <laughs> to my new friend, Suzanne, Suzanne Boyd, the, the host of People of Palm Beach. And she's like, oh, I have something for you. And she introduced me to something I have to tell everybody. So anybody who uses, and this is not exactly the the official tip segment yet, but I have to throw this out there as, a, as an extra bonus tip because um, it comes from one of the greats and dang it, she knows what she's talking about. So this stuff, it's called throat coat. 
And it's exactly what it sounds like. It is like a comfort blanket for your throat. <laughs> it is, it is an herbal tea is called, is from traditional medicinals and, uh, it's, they sell it in Publix. And so I'm, I feel like I'm speaking to mostly Floridians. So y'all should know what Publix is, but if you don't <laughs> go to your local store and it's, it's, so it's called throat coat. I'm not even kidding. I took two sips of this stuff. And my throat felt like there was silk being painted onto it. And I texted Suzanne and I said, okay, what kind of voodoo is this? Because my throat <laughs> feels so much better. And it's legal. And it's legal. And I was <laughs> able to speak Tuesday night after that. So major shout out to... Sounds like something we all should have on hand, I actually, know, as to, podcasters. Exactly. That's yeah. hence the point of me talking Herb about coat. it. <laughs> and what, so, who is it from again? Uh, traditional Medicinals. And, and that does sound like something that would be illegal. I'm telling you, it <laughs> should be because it's great. So. <laughs> I'm going to get some. Yeah, but, so yeah. we're so we were running around a lot. But thank you to our new host, Suzanne. She helped save my voice for Tuesday night. Night. This um, was a big problem we always had with the acting company too, uh, because we'd be speaking to rooms of four hundred, and sometimes not always mic'd. So yeah. oh, have to God, worry about. Imagine. Well, and she was a new morning news anchor for twenty years, so she's like, I lived on this stuff, so I see why. And she said they actually she just happened to post on it on social media, and they sent her like a whole box. So it might be something you see me, <laughs> yeah, see yeah, me shout gonna out today post, later. She's gonna be posting it everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so you can find Beach Talk Radio. You can find uh, people of Palm Beach. Uh, all our new shows in the FPN feed on iTunes. You can subscribe and get all of them in one in one big thing and hopefully we'll be creating a mobile app for the Florida Podcast Network in the near future. Well, now it's time for our podcasting tip of the episode. And this time, Jemmy is on deck. Yeah, so while we were at PodFest, um, we had so many awesome side conversations and this, this tip comes from one of those. Uh, I was Talking with Karen Rowe, she is an author, and she helps other people figure out how do you get your book published, right? So she she pulled me aside and asked to pick my brain for a little bit. And I thought, wow, I really like what I had to say. So I thought I'd share it with everybody <laughs> else. Because basically, this tip is for anybody who creates like how-to content, whether you're a podcaster, an author, blogger. If you are creating content about how to do something like publishing books then this is helping you repurpose that content into a podcast to help establish yourself as a voice in your industry. So a lot of people want to create podcasts because they want to become an influencer, you want to be the person who knows how to do this or do whatever, right? So if you want to know how to do something and you want to be that voice and put yourself out there, here's a great tip. Take all the content that you have and give it a good evaluation how you can organize it and see if there is a subset of that content that is more introductory. So for example, in Karen's case, her content related to, you know, how to publish a book. So there was a lot of stuff about those first initial steps on the creative writing process. So I said, well, why don't you take all of that content, package those as episodes, create episodes out of that content, make that free to your listeners, open to the public as you would any other podcast, right? Have it sponsored by advertisers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that can be maybe first five, six, 10 episodes. Then take the rest of your content and figure out what other themes there are in, 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 throughout there. So, for example, the common threads for her were the publishing process. And then it was post-publishing. There was the marketing process. So I said, OK, create themes and episode groups out of those and now put all of those as chunks behind a paywall. So now you have those first few episodes as free content that engages people and brings them in and you are getting people to pay for that through sponsorships and advertising, but your listeners aren't paying for that. Your members aren't paying for that. But then you've created this whole other thing, this whole extra bonus stuff that's behind a paywall for your paying members to take advantage of. And you're setting yourself up as not only an influencer, you're repurposing your content in a really um, strategic way, but then you're also are able to monetize it on both on both sides. And another thing that Karen and I discuss is that package that those podcast episodes that are behind that paywall. If you have other offerings, if you have such a, for example, an online course or something like that, that can be just part of that overall package offering. So a lot of people get into podcasts because they want to you know, monetize, because they have content they want to flip because and repurpose, because they want to set themselves up as, as, as influencers. So if you have that kind of situation, this is a little tip of, of a way that you can both monetize and be strategic in how you delve that content out. 
and not only set yourself up as an influencer, but then make a little bit of money uh, through through the back end through membership. So that was my tip to Karen. And let me tell you, her eyes got super wide and she was so jazzed. And I was so excited that I made a little bit of a difference for Karen. And hopefully this tip can make a little bit of difference for you as you are getting into podcasting. Well, you all are podcasters, so you know you can go to floridapodcastingnews.com to get details on today's show. You can also find our show notes and any links that are in there, as usual, just like you say at the end of every one of your podcasts. <laughs> so we really love your feedback. Join us in our closed Facebook group exclusively for super fans of Florida Podcast Network. And I noticed we've had some fans joining mm-hmm. here, so that's great. Just first search for FPN Insiders on Facebook to leave us comments and to have a chat with us. If you have questions that you want to hear Jemmy and I answer on the show, We'll be happy to do that as well. We look forward to meeting you in there. Uh, And if you have any podcasting news to submit to the show or to our newsletter, please email them to Jemmy, J-A-I-M-E, at floridapodcastnetwork.com. Many thanks to this week's sponsor, me, (laughs) my company, Flintstone (laughs) Media. (laughs) And be sure to visit all the great shows on the Florida Podcast Network. You can find them at floridapodcastnetwork.com. Until next time, thanks for hanging out with us on the inside of Florida's podcasting industry. 